Hello and welcome back to Football Daily, where today we are providing you with an XI of players who simply aren't good enough for their current clubs. This script was written by me, Doogie Critchley, so direct all hate to my Twitter. Let's get started. Goalkeeper, Joel Robles. Most of the talks surrounding Real Batiste this summer centred around their capture of Leon captain Nabil Fakir, who contributed 42 league goals over the previous two seasons for a knockdown £17.7 million. But very little attention was paid to their decision to offload not just Lo Celso and Firpo, but also goalkeeper Paro Lopez to Roma. In his stead, they brought in 21-year-old sporting Hihon stopper Danny Martin and decided to put their faith in last year's backup 29-year-old Joel Robles. The former Everton player started the season in disastrous fashion, getting sent off just eight minutes into his La Liga debut and missing the subsequent 5-2 hammering at the hands of Barcelona. Since his return, he's conceded 13 goals in eight games, including another five against Villarreal. Whilst Robles hasn't had much protection from a defence which contains two new fullbacks and Emerson and Alfonso Pedraza, he's still got to take his fair share of blame for his side conceding 20 league goals, a figure only topped by six teams in Europe. Before we move on to our next section, just a quick reminder to subscribe to Football Daily and hit that notification bell to never miss a video. Right back, Sir Aurier. Everyone was surprised when Atletico Madrid splurged just under £20 million on Kieran Trippier in July 2019. Whilst it's become clear why lost Rocky Blancos wanted the former Burnley defender, it's actually Spurs' the decision to sell that has come under intense scrutiny. Foyt's ankle injury has meant he hasn't played a minute this term, whilst 22-year-old Carl Walker-Peters' shaky form has meant he hasn't featured since the end of August. This has meant that 26-year-old Serge Aurier has been thrust once again into the spotlight, a position he simply does not look ready for. Whilst his baseline stats of 4.4 tax and interceptions per 90 might look incredible, it fails to tell the whole story, with the Ivorian dribble past 1.2 times per 90, the second-worst ratio of all Premier League right-backs. His performance in Spurs' 7-2 thrashing at the hands of Bayern Munich was simply inexcusable, with the former PSG man putting in half the tackles of Serge Gnabry, who routinely beat him with ease on his way to four goals and one assist. With Moussa Sissoko now occasionally playing right back for Pochettino's men and another penalty conceded just this weekend, time appears to be up for Aurier in North London. Centre-back, Nicolas Otamendi OK, this is a slightly different one because we certainly wouldn't advocate selling Nicolas Otamendi in January as he is only one of two fit established centre-backs at Pep Guardiola's disposal. But the 31-year-old's form since being thrust back into the limelight by injuries to Laporte and Stones has put his long-term future at Man City in doubt. Whilst the Citizens may have scored 32 goals across their first 10 league games, a figure only topped by three teams in Premier League history, Man City of 17-18, 11-12 and Arsenal 2009-10, they have already conceded nine league goals, a figure they didn't reach until the 4th of December last campaign. Whilst Otamendi hasn't been at fault for all their shortcomings, his performances in their two defeats at the hands of Norwich and Wolves were absolutely woeful. In the latter, Otamendi might have completed four tackles, won five aerial duels and completed 96% of his passes, but that doesn't cover his inexplicable need to go to ground, which saw an away side score twice at the Etihad for just the fourth time in their last 45 league games there. Already six points behind table toppers Liverpool, Pep simply can't afford any more slip-ups from his error-prone centre-back. Centre-back, Mapu Yanga Mbiwa Fans of Newcastle won't have particularly fond memories of Mapu Yanga Mbiwa. Signed from Montpellier for £8.5 million in January 2013, the centre-back lasted just 18 months on Tyneside before he was shipped off to Roma on loan. The weird thing about Yanga Mbiwa was that he was actually fairly solid for Newcastle when called upon. He matched 4.4 tackles and interceptions with an 82% pass accuracy during the 13-14 season as the Magpies finished 10th. Unfortunately, the full-cap Frenchman garnered a reputation as something of a hothead during his time at St James's, picking up five yellow cards and a red during his one season at the club. Having joined Lyon from Roma in August 2015, the former Ligue 1 champion with Montpellier has faded into obscurity. 69 appearances across his first two campaigns, the 30-year-old has played just 127 minutes of league action since the start of 1718, despite suffering no injuries. A strange end to a strange career path, Yanga Mbiwa surely deserves another chance somewhere, maybe. Left-back, Didac Villa After finishing in the top 10 three times in the last five years, Espanyol made the baffling decision to sell their best striker, Borja Iglesias, and best player, Mario Hermoso, for close to £50 million this summer, and spend just £60 million in return. It's fair to say those calls have backfired spectacularly, with the Barcelona club winning just two of their opening 10 league games to sit 19th. Whilst they may have only scored six goals, the majority of their problems are at the other end, where they have conceded at least two goals in 50% of their matches, and 15 overall, the third worst record in La Liga. It seems a little harsh to pull one player out of this shocking defence, but 30-year-old left-back Didek Villa has been particularly poor. 
3.9 tackles and interceptions per 90 sounds promising, but it's only good enough for fourth in Los Periquitos squad. Completing just 0.6 dribbles and providing 0.8 key passes, not to mention completing just 69% of his passes, 16th in the squad, Villa, as one of the most experienced players, simply isn't pulling his weight. Central midfield, Xhaka. Many Arsenal fans were appalled on the 27th of September 2019 when Unai Emery made the delusional decision to name Granit Xhaka as Laurent Koscielny's successor as Arsenal's permanent captain. After all, the 27-year-old Swiss international has been at the heart of all the Gunas' problems so far this season. Because whilst they might sit fifth, three points behind Leicester and four ahead of arch-rival Spurs, their performances have been haphazard to say the least. An injury hit back four which has been shorn of the likes of Bellerin, Tierney and Holding for the majority of the season so far has conceded 14 goals, the same as 14th place Brighton, which is fairly lucky considering they are conceding 15.4 shots per game, the fourth worst record in the division. With Emery deciding Lucas Torreira is best used further forward, the majority of the midfield protection has to come from Xhaka. And yet, he is only managing 2.7 tackles and deceptions per 90, fifth in the Arsenal squad and only 0.2 more than left winger Saka. As if that wasn't bad enough, his poor reading of the game and brainless defending has seen him pick up four yellow cards and give away a penalty against Spurs, his fifth penalty conceded since 1617 more than any other player. With Arsenal fans showing their displeasure at his performances in their 2-2 draw with Palace, it feels like time could be up for the Swiss international in North London. Centre mid, Andreas Pereira. Every now and again you get a player at a top club that just simply doesn't seem up to the requisite standard. Man United's Andreas Pereira is exactly that player. The 23-year-old Brazilian actually made his debut in March 2015 under Louis van Gaal. And in the intermittent five full seasons, he has made a further 42 appearances for the Red Devils. In August 2016, with a player keen for more first-team action, Jose Mourinho decided to loan him to Granada, where the one-cap Brazilian played arguably the best football of his career. Whilst he was powerless to prevent their relegation, five goals and three assists in 35 games at 20 years old seemed to suggest the former PSV Academy member had something about him. However, his next loan spell at Valencia proved less fruitful, and since returning to the fold, Pereira has contributed three Premier League goals in 24 games since the start of 1718. Despite making all but three of his nine appearances this term on the wing, he is averaging just 1.5 key passes, fewer than Luke Shaw, and 1.2 dribbles per 90, eighth in this poor United side squad. 23 and therefore unlikely to improve, we suggest United look to shift him and give more game time to the likes of Mason Greenwood, Tahith Chong, or Joe Garner. Centre mid, Adam Lalana. When Adam Lalana signed a new three-year contract in February 2017, it was just reward for his superb form under Jurgen Klopp. Signed by Brendan Rodgers, an injury hit first season meant the Reds' faithful didn't see the best of him until Klopp took over in October 2015. Ten Premier League goal contributions in 15-16, four in their run to the Europa League final, and another eight goals and seven assists in the league in 16-17, the former Southampton captain was at the top of his game and one of Liverpool and England's main men. But since the start of 17-18, three separate injuries have seen him miss 39 games. And now fit, he has struggled to break into a side that has lost just one of their last 49 league matches, and won a Champions League in that time. Lalana has now made just 34 league and Champions League appearances since the start of 1718, of which just eight have been starts. But it's not just his body which has been diminished by his spells on the sidelines, but also his skills, with his expected goals and assists ratio of 0.17 in 1819, half of what it was in 1617. Now 31 and with his contract expiring next summer, Klopp should look to offload him for a fee rather than lose him for free in eight months' time. Right wing, Lucas Vasquez. The whole footballing world is pretty surprised that 28-year-old Lucas Vasquez has lasted this long at Real Madrid. 191 appearances spread across four and a bit seasons, playing an average of 46 games per campaign prior to 1920, it's clear that the four Los Bancos managers that he's played under have valued him. A hard-working winger who averaged 3.3 tackles and interceptions per 1980-19, Vasquez has never seemed to have the requisite ability to consistently make the difference in the final third. Despite playing 31 league games in 1819, 15 of which were starts, he ranked 12th for shots, 5th for key passes and 5th for dribbles in Real's squad. While that might not sound too bad, the fact he has only contributed 7 goals in his last 45 league and Champions League appearances shows he is simply not up to the required level. With his expected goals ratio of 0.17 in 1819, less than half of what it was two years before, perhaps with Hazard, Bale, Asensio, Brahim Diaz, Vinicius Jr and Rodrigo on the books, Zidane should look to permanently offload the declining Spaniard. Striker, Dominic Calvert-Lewin Whilst Marcus Rashford has come in for some unwarranted criticism recently, he has clearly shown enough to suggest he'll be one of England's best players for the next decade. 
but we aren't even convinced Everton's Calvert-Lewin is good enough for his club. The Toffees have spent a massive £457 million since the start of 1617. More than Spurs, Arsenal, Liverpool and yet they continue to persist with a 22-year-old Sheffield United Academy graduate, who simply doesn't seem up to the task. Just 13 goals in 84 Premier League appearances with a best of 6 in 1819, for all Calvert-Lewin's work rate and pressing ability, he quite simply doesn't contribute enough goals. And with 1.3 shots per 90 fewer than Emerson and only good enough for 148th in the Premier League, alongside 0.1 key passes per 90, half that of Martin Kelly, it's clear that Calvert-Lewin isn't up to scratch. With the perfectly able Moise Keane waiting in the wings and Richarlison capable of playing centrally, we suggest the under-pressure Marco Silva drops or offloads DCL. Left wing, Fabio Barini. Fair play to Fabio Barini because although the 28-year-old may not be the most technically proficient player, he has still recovered from playing championship football nine years ago with Swansea to end up at AC Milan via spells at Roma, Liverpool and Sunderland. The whole football world was pretty surprised when the Rosaneri exercised their option to buy for just under £5 million following the Italian's loan spell at the San Siro in 1718. Barini may have proved himself useful with 44 appearances that season, but his output of just four goals and six assists in the league and Europa League suggested he was little more than a stopgap. And so it proved with the one-cap utility player contributing a goal every 259 minutes in the league and Champions League in 1819. With the arrivals of Rafa Liao and Antti Rebic further relegating Barini down the pecking order, unless new manager Stefano Pioli rates him, the Italian is unlikely to add to his 70 league minutes this term anytime soon. So guys, that was our XI of players who simply aren't good enough for their current clubs. Were there any controversial inclusions or omissions? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.